Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. I'm here to tell you about Bolin Branch and how you can discover this new level of softness with their iconic sheets. In a recent customer survey, 96% responded that Bolin Branch sheets get softer with every wash. They source the rarest 100% organic cotton for an incredible softness to start. Then they skip the toxins and harsh chemicals for a natural feel unlike anything else, and it all comes together with their signature weave. This special design feels buttery, breathable, and unlocks new levels of softness with every wash, and they stand behind their promise of softness. With their 30-night guarantee, you can wash, style, and sleep in their sheets for an entire month. If during the 30 nights, you don't love your sheets or feel them getting softer and softer, you can send them right back. No questions asked. So head to BowlinBranch.com for 15% off your first order with code ODYSSEY. That's B-O-L-L and Branch.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. I'm Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And I'm Scott Jason with Fog.net. This is a replay of WIBW's TV show, The Drive. Here's this week's episode on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Good evening, Wildcat and Jayhawk fans, and welcome to The Drive, sponsored by Briggs Auto Group. I'm Tim Fitzgerald of GoPowerCat.com, and the man across the studio from me is Scott Chasen of Fog.net. Scott, not exactly a fulfilling weekend of football, and if you talk basketball, KU got the only win that we can talk about. Yeah, not, not a great week for Kansas football, Kansas basketball, K-State basketball, K-State football. You want to just go? Yeah, let's go. That's okay. it for the show tonight. But you can interact with us on social media at facebook.com slash the drive show on Twitter at the drive 13. And of course, answer our weekly poll question and make your game predictions on that Twitter page. And remember, if you ever miss an episode of the drive, it's okay. You can listen to an audio only version that will appear each Monday morning in the form of a podcast at both gopowercat.com and fog.net. And we start things off with our two minute drill. The two minute drill is sponsored by Vanderbilt's your work boot center. Well, if it's K-State football played better than it has recently, but still lost to Baylor on a last second field goal. If it's how damaging was this loss for the Wildcats? It hurt because they should have won. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, the other games, uh, even Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State was probably the better team because it had an opportunity to win. They got blown out by West Virginia and smoked by Iowa State. So this was progress. Uh, K-State answered a quick touchdown by West Virginia, by, yeah, by Baylor, excuse me, they're wearing all yellow. They're dressed like West Virginia. It does look like West Virginia. By Baylor, uh, after a quick turnover with Will Howard, uh, K-State answered, and they answered the answer throughout this game, and they seemed to be in the, in the spot of putting it away, but then their last offensive possession was truly baffling. People are up in arms about it, and they should be. People are up in arms about the officiating, which was bizarre all day long. They overturned some calls, they upheld some calls, and everything seemed to go in Baylor's way. Uh, including a really crucial uh, personal foul penalty for hitting below the knee that wasn't below the knee. And Baylor ended up winning the game on a field goal on the last play of the game. Baylor has been on the cusp of winning. I, people have said to me, Baylor's awful. They weren't awful. They, if you go back and look through their games, they were getting more and more competitive. They had lost on a last second field goal at Texas Tech. There's no doubt in my mind if K-State was healthier and maybe in a different part of the season, they win this game. Uh, but they didn't. You got to play them when they arrive, and K-State wasn't good enough to win this game. And strangely enough, it was the defense in the second half that came apart after being completely dominant in the first half. Scott, they had six sacks in the first half and held to Baylor to less than 100 yards of offense. And then Baylor really kind of changed their mm -hmm. scheme and threw underneath quite a bit, and K-State never really adjusted that. And uh, you know what? It, it's a loss. And K-State's now 4-4 four and four in the conference after winning four and then losing four. And the last game of the season is coming up next Saturday with Texas coming to Manhattan. And it'll decide if K-State finishes above 500 or below 500 in the conference. But people shouldn't lose sight of the fact that K-State is 4-4 four and four in the conference. Mm -hmm. The way it's happened hasn't been comfortable. But still, if they can get above 500 for the second year in a row, that says an awful lot about a program in its second year with Chris Kleiman. Yeah, I agree. And just think, if you could go back and just flip one of those coin flip results that they've had, the season probably just psychologically feels a lot different yeah. just getting that extra extra W there. That's what it is this season, just mm -hmm. a weird year. Well, Scott, Kansas fans have 
turned their sights to basketball. Don't blame them. So <laughs> let's start off there. The Jayhawks had two games this week, including a loss to number one Gonzaga, who's not bad. Yeah. What did you learn about this team? Well, I'll tell you what I learned about that team. Gonzaga is uh, what I think everyone thought they were. They are the number one team in the country. And you know what? That was a tie game late into the second half with a lot of guys not playing very well for Kansas. I know there was some doom and gloom because, you know, Kansas last year only lost three games. Oh, by the way, they did lose the season opener last year before, you know, they turned into the best team in college basketball. But I think anyone who watched these games knows this is a different Kansas team. Uh, the story that I wrote following this game began by saying that uh, if the Utah Jazz felt really good about drafting Udoka Azubuki out of Kansas, if they turned off on this game, they would have said, we feel great about it. This Kansas team looks like it lost everything on the inside. You know, David McCormick had a really rough go of things in the front court fits. It started uh, with the first game. He's matched up against Drew Timmy, who you know, quite frankly, might be the best big man he faces all year. There's a guy at Iowa who's pretty good that, you know, maybe they'll see in the tournament. But uh, Timmy was terrific, fantastic. And, you know, he follows that up in the second game against the team that plays five guards and shoots it from all five positions. Those were two really tough matchups for him, but he also wasn't good enough. He wasn't strong enough inside. He didn't make smaller defenders pay when he was matched up against them. He rebounded okay, not great. Defensively, a ton of issues for David McCormick, both positionally, uh, not having strength, and it didn't get much better when they went to Mitch Lightfoot. So what does Bill Self do? He goes five guards. He had hinted they might, and Jalen Wilson comes out of nowhere uh, to really, in my opinion, to be the story uh, of this first week of the season. He's averaging double digits in scoring. This is a guy who played two minutes last year before an ankle injury ended his season and then back spasms made it so he couldn't come back. Last year, Jalen Wilson did not look comfortable to me. Didn't seem like he maybe had a place in the rotation. This year, he absolutely does. Whether he's the fifth starter starting at the four spot or he's the first guy off the bench to be a small ball five, uh, he gives this Kansas team a completely different kind of element. It's also worth noting, it is small ball. They are playing five guards. But when Wilson's at the five, he's 6'8", and if you see his legs, they're gigantic. He, he's absolutely very strong and strong enough to be a, a, a big man in college basketball. He says he gets it from his mom, Fitz. That's where he gets the strength from, that side mm. of the family. So uh, that, that's really been the thing. It's been the front court for KU. I don't know. Saying that you get your gigantic legs from your mom seems like holidays are going to be rough on him. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> Let's jump back to football. Scott, Kansas lost big to TCU, 59-23. K-State lost a close one against Baylor, 32-31. Which is the worst way to lose? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, maybe you could argue it if you haven't been on the, the Kansas side, the Kansas covering side, even a fan of Kansas side of things. The, the answer, in my, my opinion, is undoubtedly Kansas. And, and the case in point is, you know, when things started going wrong, TCU goes up 24 to nothing. There was a, a play Kansas ran. It was a really creative run play look. Uh, by the way, you see a pretty creative uh, fake leading to this deep shot touchdown here on your screen. But a creative run play. It, it ripped off 30 yards or something like that. And I just tweeted, oh, that's a really interesting look. Uh, and, and the replies were just, no, everything is going wrong. This is terrible. We're not going to talk about this. And, and I understand it. People are unhappy, and they have every right to be. You know, I, I've mentioned this a million times, but Kansas has basically made the gamble that it's going to commit to a full high school rebuild. You see a freshman throwing to a freshman there. Um, they're going to commit to a full high school rebuild. And you know what? You may not know if it's working or not for a couple of years, but it's going to result in a ton of losses in the short term. I think that's made some people upset, and I think it's made some people antsy. So this, this is the tough way to lose. No one likes uh, how it feels to lose by 30 or 40 every week. Well, I'm going to counter your argument there with this. K-State lost 45 to nothing at Iowa State and then lost on the last second field goal to Baylor, and that was worse, and here's why. It felt like Iowa State was just a bad date. You just wanted it to get over, and it wouldn't get over. Uh, dinner was bad. The conversation was bad. He just couldn't get out of this date. Dessert was disappointing. Right. Baylor was like, yeah, everything's going right. And you know what? And they didn't at the end. It just kind of broke your heart. You she didn't call you back. You, yeah, you thought you met the one. And nope, nope, she broke your heart. This was a heartbreaker for K-State that uh, really wanted this win. Uh, I guess what we're saying here, folks, is losing stinks. 
<laughs> That's what you could take out of this topic here at yeah. the drive. Fitz, you were on the cusp of using the term ghosted there, and I was really <laughs> excited to see if you knew that term. I was really hoping. Like, it. Just say ghosted. Just say it. Could have been cool. Mm. Could have been cool. So now close. a quick look at your poll question <laughs> results. The poll questions are brought to you by Midland Exteriors. Love the home you live in. Call today for a free estimate. Well, last week's question was, should KU basketball hang a championship banner? For the 2019-20 season, after ending the year ranked number one, look at the results. 21% of people say yes, hang that banner. 79% of people say no. This week's question is this. K-State basketball is 0-2 with losses to Drake and Colorado. How many games out of the possible 18 will the Wildcats win in Big 12 play? Your answers are A, 0-2, B, 3-5, C, 6-8. And D is there'll be nine, 500 or above. That's all. That's the best answer. Can they get to 500? Vote on our Twitter page at the Drive 13. Well, that'll do it for this half of the two minute drill, but we will be right back with more on KU and K State on the Drive. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Welcome back to The Drive as we continue our weekly two-minute drill. Two-minute drill sponsored by Vanderbilt's Your Work Boot Center. Kansas State basketball opened the season with losses to Drake in Colorado in the Little Apple Classic. Fitz, what were your thoughts on Bruce Weber's young team? Oh, it's going to be a long season. But, I, you know, I knew that, and I talked about it on a recent show. This team doesn't have many uh, older players. They have one senior. They have one junior college transfer uh, that's a junior. Uh, and the rest are freshmen and sophomores, and they look like a team that are that's filled with freshmen and sophomores. Let's get to the good things. Nigel Pack, the point guard, is very promising. Has a lot to learn. Went up against a very good point guard from Colorado. Kind of uh, had a rough day at times, but he's now scored all of his points from three-point range. So once he gets, uh, you know, better at getting the ball into lane and scoring, uh, I think Nigel Pack's going to be really special for K-State. They've got two big men in Casey uh, Izagu, Iziagu. I'm going to get it at some point, Scott. I, I cannot spell it. That's a good sign. Uh, and Davian Bradford, two legitimate big men who both look like they have promise and yet somehow combine for one rebound against Colorado, which mm-hmm. is mystifying since they combined for 33 minutes. Wouldn't the ball come to you by accident yeah. more than one time? Anyhow. Uh, they are very promising. They have some guys, and they just kind of need to figure out who fits where, what the proper rotations are, uh, and how they'll go together. And you know what? They still won't be very good. This is going to be a long season because this team has a lot of lessons to learn. The future is down the road. K-State has allowed Bruce Weber this season to rebuild from last year's disaster, and this will see what you know comes down in the future. This guy's going to be a really, really long season. This team will come up, pop up, and win some games, and they were very good in the early game, in the early part of the game with Colorado, and then kind of came apart when they had some calls go against them. And, mm-hmm. and yet they took the lead at halftime, and then Colorado was a lot more precise in what they were doing in the second half and kind of pulled away. Every time you watch them, the two times I've watched them, you see positive signs, but there's not enough of them, and slowly they'll put together longer stretches of good basketball and beat someone and maybe that'll be Monday against UMKC. Yeah well I'll tell you what I noticed watching the first game against Drake it was kind of uncharacteristic for a Bruce Weber team just the number of open threes given up even the ones that missed and I thought to myself 
this feels like new team working in new people and the kind of COVID run up yeah. to the season, not normal. Uh, I, I do expect they'll improve. They won't be great this year, but no. I think they'll improve. Uh, they, they did look better on defense for most of that Colorado game, but Colorado was also a lot better than Drake, mm -hmm. uh, including the rapper. They were, Colorado's better than him, too. That's how good they were. <laughs> Scott, you spoke about the Kansas front court in the last segment. How about the back court? What stood out to you last game? Well, you know, if you go back to the very beginning of this kind of tip-off event down in Florida, uh, Bryce Thompson, five-star freshman, is pretty good. He ends up earning his way into the starting lineup. But then it's Dewan Harris who sort of comes out of nowhere off the bench in the second half and Fitz completely changed this game. This was a one-point game when he entered with about 15 minutes. Actually, I know exactly, 15 minutes and 31 seconds to play. How's that? Very Kansas good. outscored uh, St. Joseph's by 21 points the rest of the game. So it went from 1 to 21 uh, and pretty much all with Dewan Harris on the court. And what he was doing, it, it was simple. It was just sharing the ball, passing. He's not a guy, his first look is to pass. His second look through the 26th look he's going to give, it's all passing. This is a guy who is not a willing shooter. Bill Self said after the game, uh, they don't even want him looking for a shot. He did knock down a three because he was so wide open he had to take it. But uh, essentially, he's a guy who can just find people all over the court. He was a late add to KU in the recruiting cycle, and he didn't play game one. He, uh, Bill Self said after the game it was due to injury. But behind the scenes, there has been a lot of chatter about this guy. And I, I think a lot of it's from an intangible standpoint you know these are physical things he had a couple steals he took two charges so you can kind of put numbers and, and physical stuff to that but I think it's a mindset kind of thing that allows a, a young freshman to be in the position to do those things uh, we had heard that he can uh, run an offense he can control a team he can uh, he was the bench units point guard going back to last year uh, we had heard a lot of those things. It was just more of a question about, are we ever going to see it? I is he going to get the chance to play? And when he only plays mop-up duty against Gonzaga, you really wonder that. Well, uh, he's been injured. He hasn't looked fast. Bill Self said he hasn't played like this in any of the practices yet. Uh, but he got his chance in the game when Kansas wasn't playing well and had to go to those five-guard looks. And, uh, man, he really impressed. I, I think he's been a great find for Kansas uh, basically since they got him, uh, probably a guy that was undervalued in the recruiting ranks, maybe some questions if he'd be uh, eligible on you know one side or another of things when uh, he was first getting to KU, but the Jayhawks took a chance on him. He ends up coming on campus and... Fitz, he, he might be the key. He's not going to be a starter. I know some people want him to start after the last game. He's not going to start. Uh, but if he's your, your seventh guy in the backcourt, I, I think that makes, uh, makes him really interesting. Your seventh man on the team uh, and maybe one of your first guards off the bench. Man, those glue guys, the connective tissue that keeps everyone together mm -hmm. and makes everyone better are so, so valuable. Mm -hmm. And now we step out of bounds, and Out of Bounds is brought to you by Copeland Insurance Agency, part of your community for more than 60 years. Well, Fitz, as of now, most bowls are planning to be held outside of, you know, the playoffs and, and the New Year's Six Bowls, which will feature the top teams. There are a bunch of lesser bowls. So my question for you is, do those bowls serve a purpose this season? You know, I don't think so. I really don't. I, uh, people keep asking me, what bowl will Kansas State go to? And I'm not sure they will. I mean, they're qualified. Everyone's qualified this year. There's no limitations on who can go to a bowl. KU can. But I think a lot of teams, if they're around 500, are going to say, uh, I know we like, you typically like the practice, but enough, enough of the lockdowns, enough of, you know, everything that teams have to do this year, Scott, to just get to the field, get there to compete. Uh, are, it's been so strenuous. I, I think a lot of players will be like, can we just move on mm -hmm. and get out of the season and worry about spring football? Because even if you get a destination, you go to Florida or Arizona or California, you can't really do anything. And you're really going to be stuck in your hotel room, quarantined in a bubble while you're at the bowl trip. Or do you even go in advance? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you just kind of do everything via Zoom teleconference, which we're all doing now, and show up the day before the game like any other game? Well, that's not a bowl experience either. I know the coaches want the practice, and the practice is valuable. I think a better thing for the NCAA would be to say, look, you all get an extra week of spring or whatever this year because the bowl season is just going to be a wipeout. Uh, I really don't know how many games will be played, but I know a lot of bowls want to be played. Mm -hmm. But if you're not in the New Year's Six this year in this pandemic, just shut it down, man. Move on. Move on to the next season. Yeah, I, I think, like you mentioned, coaches would like the practice. A program like Kansas could certainly use that practice. But 
Uh, you know, first of all, Kansas isn't going to be headed to a bowl, almost certainly, although everyone is, like you said, eligible this year. But, yeah, for the most part, I tend to agree with you that, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy that this many games have already been got in, you, you know, based off what's happening on the basketball side. So uh, I would have no problem if, if things got shut down. I think a lot of people would agree. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now let's hear from the fans. And our fan question this week is this. Do you think Christian Brown can lead the team in scoring this year from Kristen in Lawrence? Uh, first of all, I'm troubled by the spelling of Brown, but uh, he is a very good basketball player. I, th- I thought you were going to highlight Kristen asking the question about Christian. Ooh. Like I didn't pick that up. An alias. Yeah, look, uh, Christian Brown had a 30-point game. So uh, anytime someone does that under Bill Self, which, by the way, in the first like half of Bill Self's Kansas tenure, 30-point games didn't happen. That, that was a complete rarity. That wasn't how Kansas played. It was much more balanced, less a uh, one guy playing like that. But, you know, he only took 13 or so shots. He was just on fire from three and drilled like five of them. Uh, this is a guy who's shooting 60-plus percent from three in his first two games. No, I don't think he will lead them in scoring. Maybe he can. I expect it to be Ochai Abaji and then maybe still David McCormick. That's Bill Self's pick. Uh, but I do think this Kansas team can only hit its ceiling if one of those guards, be it Ochai Abaji, be it Christian Brown, is leading them in scoring uh, because those are the guys who need to be uh, kind of dictating and, and showing, I guess, what Kansas can do. They can score in transition. They can spot up behind the perimeter and draw the defense out. Uh, those guys are probably more important to the offense than individually maybe David McCormick. Well, uh, remember to ask us your questions on our Facebook page and on Twitter at The Drive 13. And when we return, we will look at our predictions here on The Drive. Is your January looking dry? Get some lotion, get a humidifier, and better yet, get Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can compare prices across local stores to get the best price on a huge selection of drinks perfect for dry January. Every single time. Non-alcoholic wines? Have a look. Ready-made mocktails? Grab a straw and order them up. Beer without the alcohol? (laughs) Yep, take your pick. You can find all of them here, in the app, in that phone that's in your hand. Could it be any simpler? Nope, not a chance. So shop for great deals on all your dry January beverages or other drinks and get them delivered to your door or blanket fort, maybe. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. And don't forget to lotion up your elbows. They're looking a little dry. Welcome back as we head down the home stretch of this week's show. And now it's time to take a look at our predictions. And remember to make your weekly predictions on our Twitter page at The Drive 13. Let's look at last week's results. Please, let's look at these yeah. results. The viewers went 10 and 1. Some 10 and guy one. named Fitz went 3 and 0 because he stole a game from Scott. And Scott went 0-3 because yeah. Fitz is a bully. I would like to, to motion yeah. to strike one from Fitz's record nope. for saying the I viewers went 10-1 and, and not 2-1. and one. That's a little mistake there. I think we need to ding Fitz oh, did for I? that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, but I'm in the lead at <laughs> yeah, 500. I think you still would be. <laughs> now this week's peak picks start with Kansas. This is unbelievable. Plus 31 and a half at Texas Tech. Can Texas Tech win by 32 or more against Kansas? I say yes. Money line, Kansas. No, I'm just kidding. But to cover 31 and a half, I think Kansas will. <laughs> the, the spreads are just ridiculous. <laughs> they're, get, they're getting there, though. Uh, they're, Vegas is figuring it out. That, yep. That's the first good spread Kansas has faced this year. Uh, next, Texas, minus six and a half at K-State. Fitz, you say? Will Texas win by seven in Manhattan? I say no. I don't know that Texas will lose, but I think like last week, K-State might cover that in a losing effort, but I do think K-State's going to win because I'm an optimist. Last week, I said Texas is back. This week, they're double back. I'll take Texas. They're double back. That's yeah. good. I'll, I'll call the folks in Austin. <laughs> Our last game of the week is West Virginia plus seven and a half in Ames at Iowa State. You are taking? I'll take the Mountaineers. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of road teams for you this week. Mm-hmm. I've got the Cyclones. We're different on every pick. Again, make your picks on our Twitter page at the Drive 13 And now it's time for our On the Clock segment. On the Clock is sponsored by Carpet One. Buy local for a strong local community. And we start, as always, with Scott Chasen of Fog.net. Well, expectations are a funny thing, Fitz. Ochai Abaji came to KU with none of them. He played okay, and people loved him. His next year expectations were high. He played a little bit better than the year before, and people questioned what his role was and if he was doing enough. Well, now you're seeing a year three Ochai Abaji where 
People had hopes, but maybe less on the expectation side. They were expecting him to take a step forward, but maybe didn't know as much. So that's why I'd put it more in these kind of hopes category. So far, it's paying off. He's right there, uh, you know, close behind Christian Brown for the team lead in scoring. His three-point shot looks great. His form looks improved. Uh, he's athletic. He's probably KU's best lob threat. Uh, he's come a long way. His offensive game has come a long way. Fitz, I think Ochai Abaji is going to be a very important and a very good player for KU this year. And like I said in the last segment, I do think he'd be my pick to lead the team in scoring. Very good. Well, folks, it's uh, getting to the point in the season, football-wise, where K-State fans are beginning to question, what is going on with football? They've lost four in a row. The world is ending. Uh, the world's not ending, folks. It's a screwy season, and the biggest victory of all this season is the fact that K-State's played nine games, and they've done so without interruption. That can only help this program going forward because everyone that wants to return next year without expiring eligibility will return and they'll be that much better for it. Let's see how this plays out. And that's it for this week's edition of The Drive. We will see you next week right here and all week on social media. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.